Using sugar's analysis is one of the vital analysis done in sugar laboratory. It is done to determine the extent of sucrose hydrolysis along sugarcane processing line. Remember, sucrose hydrolysis is the breakdown of sucrose to fructose and glucose. So if this sucrose is broken down along processing line, the quantity of sugar in the juice extracted from sugarcane will reduce. So the factory will not obtain sugar as received from sugarcane. Laboratory personnel use this analysis to monitor and control sugar losses in the factory. In this video, I am going to explain what reducing sugars are, principle of the, of the method used to determine reducing sugars, requirements for this analysis and procedure for analyzing sugar sample. I will cover procedure for other samples in the next video. Reducing sugars are carbohydrates that contain free aldehyde or ketone group. This aldehyde or ketone group can reduce oxidizing agent like copper sulfate by giving it electrons. Examples of reducing sugars are glucose and fructose. While non-reducing sugars are carbohydrates that cannot reduce oxidizing agent. Example of non-reducing sugars is sucrose. This reduction reaction is used in sugar industries for quantitative determination of reducing sugars in the cane extracted juice, molasses, and sugar samples. Requirements for this analysis are Number one, we have chemicals. Under chemicals, we have copper sulfate. Remember, copper sulfate is the oxidizing agent. Next, you have sodium hydroxide. Next, potassium sodium tartrate. The function of sodium hydroxide and potassium sodium tartrate is just to provide conducive environment for this reduction reaction. And next, you have methylene blue. The next requirement is sample. In this video, I'm going to cover table sugar. The next requirement is hot plate. Remember, this reaction can only occur under high temperature. So the function of this hot plate is just to boil the samples. The next requirement is volumetric flask. That's five, that is 500 ml in volume. Next, you have beakers. Next, you have spatula. Next, you have distilled water. Next, you have funnel. Next, one volumetric flask. This 100 ml for the volumetric flask is for preparing methylene blue in keto. And finally, we have burette. Reagents have to be prepared before doing the analysis. The first reagent to prepare is failing solution A. This solution contains copper sulfate. So to prepare this solution, you have to measure 34.64 grams of copper sulfate and put in 500 ml volumetric flask. Add small amount of distilled water and shake to dissolve all crystals of copper sulfate. After dissolving, top up to the mark with distilled water. The next reagent to prepare is failing solution B. Failing solution B contains sodium hydroxide and potassium sodium tartrate. So to prepare sol failing solution B, you have to measure 50 grams of sodium hydroxide and 173 grams of potassium sodium tartrate and put in 500 ml volumetric flask add small amount of water and shake to dissolve all the crystals then top up to the mark with distilled water the next reagent to prepare is methylene blue solution to prepare this you have to measure one gram of methylene blue indicator powder and dissolve in 100 ml distilled water after preparing reagents, the next step is to standardize failing solutions. But I'll not cover standardization of failing solution in this video because I'll not need failing factor to calculate percentage reducing sugars in table sugar. So I'll cover that subtopic in the next video. So let's go straight to the procedure of analyzing reducing sugars in the table sugar. Measure 75 grams of sugar and pour in 500 ml volumetric flask. Add 200 ml of hot distilled water and shake to dissolve all the crystals. After dissolving all the crystals, top up with distilled water up to the mark. Cool the solution in a cold water bath. Pour the sugar solution prepared in burette and mount this burette on the stand. Measure 5 ml of failing solution A and put in a conco flask then add to this conco flask 5 ml of failing solution B. Put the conco flask that contains 
failing solution on the hot plate and allow the failing solution to heat till it boil. Start titrating with sugar solution while shaking and boiling until color changes to brick red. Add 3 drops of methylene blue indicator and allow the solution to boil for a few seconds. Continue to titrate slowly while heating until color changes to brick red. Add 1 drop of methylene blue indicator to determine the end point of the reaction. If all the oxidizing agent has been reduced, the, the one drop of methylene blue in, indicator added will automatically turn to brick red. Titration should take a minimum of 4 minutes. For accurate results, at least do 3 titrations. Re record the titer values obtained. After getting the average of titer value, the next step is to do the calculation. Percentage reducing sugars in table sugar is, is equals to W times K times 100% over TV times IV, where W is the weight of the sample. Remember, the weight of the sample was 75 grams. K is constant, which is equal to 0 0.1202. TV is tighter value. Remember, the aim of our titration was to get tighter value next iv iv is the initial volume of the solution remember the volume of solution used in titration was 500 ml for example the tighter value of prepared solution was 83.0 milliliters calculate percentage reducing sugar of the table sugar sample so percent reducing sugar in table sugar will be equal to w Weight of sample times constant times 100% over tighter value times initial volume. So uh, the weight of the sample is 75 times constant which is 0 0.1202 times 100% over the tighter value which was 83.0 times initial volume which was 500. So this one will give us 0.022%. Failing solution change its color from blue to brick red during titrations because sugar solutions has a small percentage of fructose and glucose. And remember, fructose and glucose are reducing sugars. Reducing sugars reduce copper 2 oxide in failing solutions to insoluble copper 1 oxide. Copper 1 oxide is seen as red precipitate. This accounts for the color changes observed. The amount of sugar solution added to failing solutions up to the end up to the end point correlates with the concentration of reducing sugar in the solution. In case you titrate and find out that the failing solution remain blue, that shows that there is no reducing sugars in the solution. This reduction reaction must take place under alkaline conditions. Hence, sodium hydroxide being one of strong basic solution is added to failing solution. But copper 2 ions tends to form an insoluble precipitate with hydroxyl ions of sodium hydroxide. In order to prevent this precipitation, potassium sodium tartrate is added to failing solution so that tartrate ions form a soluble complex with the copper 2 ions isolating them from the hydroxide so these copper 2 ions will be available to react with the reducing sugars the reaction is self indicating as the disappearance of deep blue color and appearance of red precipitate signals the end point of reaction but as the amount of copper 2 ions decreases it becomes difficult to see the actual end point this leads to inaccurate analysis of reducing sugars in the sample to compensate for this, after most of the blue color has gone, methylene blue indicator is added to the solution. Methylene blue indicator is a commonly used indicator for oxidation and reduction reactions. It, it has deep blue color in its oxidized form but colorless when exposed to reducing agents. After the reducing sugars has completely reduced all all the copper 2 ions to copper 1 ions, the indicator will be reduced completely, removing the blue color from the solution. This total disappearance of, color, of blue color indicates the end point of the titration. We expect table sugar to be 100% sucrose, but it's impossible to 
attain this percentage in sugar factory. In that sugar, there will be a small percentage of moisture reducing sugars and ions. Kenya Bureau of Standards Organization has set the minimum limit of all non-sucrose compounds that should be in the processed sugar to ensure that consumers get sugar of the best quality. Remember, these non-sucrose compounds are not harmful to our health, but they only reduce sucrose content of table sugar. They also affect the storage and handling of table sugar. That's why we are concerned about these non-sucrose compounds. So the recommended percentage reducing sugar of table sugar is below 0.02%. In case it's above, it shows that there is high hydrosis along processing line.